is Football Night in America, served by Applebee's. You know what time it is. Time to wrap up week 13 of NFL play. Maria Taylor alongside in the flesh, Mike Florio. We love it when he's in the studio. Yes, Tony Dungy and Jason Garrett here with you. And we were all looking forward to this slate of games. And one of the ones that certainly jumped out to us, Bengals taking on Kansas City. It was a rematch of the 2021 AFC Championship. And Joe Burrow does it again. He's 3-0 against Patrick Mahomes. How did the Bengals pull it off? Unbelievable. They just are relentless. They're not intimidated by the Chiefs. And they go out and play their game. It helped to have Jamar Chase back, <laughs> too, who yeah. looked like he didn't miss a beat. But, you know, this Bengals team, it's just like last year. They flew under radar. Nobody took them seriously until they started winning playoff games. And even then, nobody took them seriously. And I think this year, people are thinking, I was a fluke. Last year, everybody's been talking about the Bills and the Chiefs and everybody but the Bengals. And even after today, I don't think people are going to realize how good this Bengals team is, Coach. They're, they're pretty good. And what I have been impressed with, they have fixed their offensive line problems. That's all we talked about after the yeah. Super Bowl last year. Coming in the first couple of games this year, Joe Burrow's getting whacked around. Kansas City, that was the problem today. When they rushed four guys, they got no pressure. Burrow picked them apart. Now you try to blitz, and they've got too many weapons. Coach, to me, that's what the best organizations do. They address an issue mm -hmm. from top to bottom. They had an offensive line issue. They went and addressed it. A lot of resources there, and they took their lumps early on in the season. Frank Pollock is their offensive line coach. He's one of the best offensive line coaches in the league, and you see those guys coming together. The other big point about this game is they slowed Mahomes and the Chiefs' offense down on the other side. They don't seem to be so intimidated by them, and uh, it's a tough out for Kansas City playing yeah. these Bengals. And was there any concern you walked away with after watching this game for Kansas City, Jason? There's not concern. I think Kansas City is still a, a really good team and probably a better team for me than they've been recently because I do think they're more balanced. Mm -hmm. I do think they're more physical running the football. Patrick Mahomes can, can win different ways. It's not always about the exotic plays that he's made throughout his career. So I'm still very bullish on Kansas City. I think they're uh, the one or two best teams in, in the AFC. The problem for me with Kansas City is their defense. I mean, it is if Patrick Mahomes and that offense don't get 30 points, it's tough for them to win. They're, they're not holding people uh, to 21, 24. It's 30 to 27, 34, 28. And uh, you're not going to score mm -hmm. that many points every week, week in and week out in the playoffs. And they do have a team that they may encounter at some point that just is not afraid of them. The Bills are scared to death of them. And the Bengals are not the least bit scared <laughs> of the all. Chiefs. It's amazing. <laughs> it's incredible to see every time. And, you know, we've been seeing Kansas City last second have to win the game, get a, get a touchdown pass to Travis Kelsey for the first time ever. We've seen Travis Kelsey um, lose a fumble. That happened for the first time today. So it does take some of those things to happen for Kansas City to fall. But it is interesting that the Bengals seem to have their number. Um, let's talk about the other game that we all had circled. It was Miami taking on the 49ers. We were all excited to see the 49ers defense against this, this high-powered offense. But now the storyline we're walking away with is Jimmy G done for the season Mike Florio yeah and look no disrespect intended to Jimmy Garoppolo of course it's impossible to come back from that once you say no disrespect intended because <laughs> here it comes <laughs> but he's always been viewed as the weak link of the team anyway so you take out Jimmy Garoppolo you put in Brock Purdy you still have Christian McCaffrey you still have Debo Samuel you still have one of the best defenses in the entire National Football League. And Kyle Shanahan, the coach and de facto offensive coordinator, is a master at coming up with plays that will work. He'll find plays that will work for Brock Purdy. He made it work on the fly today. He'll have a week to prepare. And I, I think they'll be, they'll be fine. Now, if Purdy gets hurt, it's a different story. But I think they'll be fine. Yeah, I said in our studio, it re really reminds me of our 99 Bucks team. And John Lynch, the general manager of the 49ers, was on that team. We lost Trent Dilfer and Eric Zier and had to go with a rookie quarterback named Sean King. We were a running team. We played great defense, and we went all the way to the NFC Championship game with that formula. We didn't put too much on the quarterback. Sean did a great job of protecting the ball. I think Purdy, what we saw today, he's going to play well for them. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more with both you guys, but one, one thing I think we have to remember is Kyle Shanahan's record as a head coach with Jimmy G versus when it's not Jimmy G. Yeah. And they've had that environment of good defense and good running game, but Jimmy G has been the difference for this team to win. It's, it's documented. 30% of the game versus 70% of the games he's won over the course of his career. So to me, it's tricky. This is another one of those uh, questions for them. Can this guy step up? Can Purdy step up? He's in a good environment. What have the 49ers learned 
playing these other backup quarterbacks through the years that maybe will help them play better down this stretch. Mm -hmm. I love that the the comparison, the dichotomy right here, because you're like, he's the worst part of the team, and you're like, he's the critical piece to wins. <laughs> and Coach Warriors is somewhere in the middle with they're going to rely on defense. And for Brock Purdy, it's just don't turn the ball over. Well, no, it's not just don't turn the ball over. He's going to have to make some plays, but – this is not like Joe Burrow getting hurt or Patrick Mahomes getting hurt where everything re revolves no around that no quarterback. You can go in and play well and make plays because of what you're going to be doing. Play action passing, you're going to get good field position a lot of times. If you go three and out, you're going to get the ball back. So it, it's, it's a different way of playing. It's as friendly a quarterback yes, environment friendly. as there could That's be. A great There's word. no doubt about that. Quarterback friendly. We'll, we'll go with that. Um, the Dolphins, though, they're going to be on Sunday Night Football for week 14. They have to go on the road. They're taking on the Chargers. Jason, you said it, Chargers' backs are up against the wall. Both teams are coming off of losses. What did we learn or see from Miami against the 49ers? What has to be improved upon as they go against this Chargers team? We've sat at this table every week, and we're amazed by the, the Miami Dolphins, how good they are, how good Tua is. These fast receivers. Today they went to San Francisco, and San Francisco handed it to them. Mm -hmm. and, and Tua did not look good, had his worst game of the year. Yeah. Threw interceptions, didn't complete passes, was high, was behind, was late. It was an uncomfortable environment for him. That defense can do that to you. Can the Chargers defense do that to Tua next week? I don't know. I, I think Miami did a little bit of it to themselves today, though. They come out, first play of the game, play action, pass, 75-yard touchdown. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is the way we got to go. They only ran seven more times in the whole game. It was just pass, pass, pass. They're, they're going to have to get back to that balance. They're going to play later on in the season at New England. They're going to play at Buffalo. It, it, it's not going to be just throw the ball around. They've got to get that balance back. They're, they're a good running team. They've got to run it. When you have great offenses, you're always concerned about one of those games that's going to provide what they call the blueprint for beating them in the future and slowing them down. I just don't think the Chargers can pull off what the 49ers can. No, they, don't they don't have, have the guys players. to do it. So if you could get Nick Bosa <laughs> this week, then maybe you could do what the 49ers did. But I, I think the Dolphins will be fine. But you've said this all year. At some point, they're going to have to go outdoors in January, mm -hmm. yeah. and we'll see what that team yeah. does when it has to, if it has to travel, when it has to travel in the postseason. Mm -hmm. So they're excited to just go to SoFi, be inside, go to L.A. <laughs> yeah. Still got a little bit of sun Fast going track. for them, right? <laughs> get, get a little time. Um, the Eagles, they just continue to roll. The NFL's best team, they go up, take on the Titans. A.J. Brown, remember, he leaves. He wants to get his guaranteed money. He gets it and then has an impeccable game, obviously. He shows up, he shows out. And the Eagles seem to show no signs of slowing down aside from their one slip up against the commanders. And you really can't stop them if they are smart enough to do whatever is gonna work that day. We'll run it against the Packers, we'll throw it against the Titans, we'll do whatever you're not expecting, or we'll do whatever we want to do, because you can't take away. You try to take away something, we'll do the other thing. They're the most balanced team in the NFL. They've stayed healthy, and they, they, they just keep winning. And you know they, they still have the Vikings a game behind them, but they're not that far away from locking up the one seed. Oh, and Jason mentioned good teams take care of their deficiencies. They had a problem early in the season stopping the run. Had some injuries in the defensive line. So what do they do? Go out and sign two big-time mm -hmm. run stoppers. And now they play Derrick Henry and hold him to 30 yards. Well, you, you take that out of the mix. And now we're not vulnerable against the run. And as you said, on offense, they're just so versatile. I, I, I love this team. Yeah, there's really good alignment in that organization, as evidenced by the the acquisitions they made this year and over the last couple of years to build the team they want to build. They're balanced. They can beat you different ways. There's an old expression, you know, Al Davis used to say, we hey, take what they give you. We take what we want. Mm -hmm. No, the, the best teams <laughs> aggressively take what the defense gives you. And when you're balanced in different areas, and if they want to defend the run, we're going to throw it. If you want to defend the pass, we're going to run it. If you can do that and really get after them like the Eagles have done, mm -hmm. you're tough to beat. They, they kind of force you on offense to play, load up the box to stop their run. Well, now they've got Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown and Quez Watkins mm -hmm. and guys who can take advantage of one-on-one -on -one coverage. So to be, hold them down, you really have to be able to defend the run, and then you better have three really good corners, <laughs> and not many teams have all that. And the other tricky piece is when we defend the pass, we can't just come rush this quarterback, yeah. mm -hmm. okay, because our rush lanes aren't disciplined. He's going to get out and make plays with his feet in the drop yeah. back 
quarterback passing game. That's another way they beat you offensively. It's incredible to see this Eagles team who coming into it, so many questions surrounding Jalen Hurts. Is he going to be the guy? Is he the court? And now when we ask you to do a halftime hit, Jason, you're like, Jalen Hurts for MVP? <laughs> <laughs> like, the entire tone has changed, and what the Eagles have been able to do is incredible. All right, guys, it's time for the lightning round. You fill in the blanks. Ravens potentially losing Lamar Jackson to injury is what, Mike? Concerning. They love Tyler Huntley, but he's not Lamar Jackson. Mm -hmm. And they're even with the Bengals atop the AFC North. They've got the Steelers twice in the final five games. They've got the Bengals again. If, if they don't have Lamar Jackson for most of the rest of the regular season, it's going to be hard to win the division. It will be hard for them, but they're, all, they're fortunate because Huntley has played in their system. He's not Lamar, but he can do some of the same things. They don't have to change the whole offense because Lamar is not there. It's almost devastating. Mm. You know, we made the comment earlier, I made the comment that Micah Parsons is the most impactful non-quarterback in the league. Lamar Jackson is an incredibly impactful player at that position. The whole offense goes through him. you got to love Hundley's experience and his poise and composure, but it's going to be tough if he has to play for too long. Doesn't it seem like this is exactly what happened last year? Lamar mm -hmm. Jackson gets injured in December. Huntley has to come in. He went one in three in those games. All right, more costly loss in the AFC. Chargers at Raiders or Jets at Vikings? It's got to be Chargers. It's got to be because now they're 6-6. Six and six. They keep losing games. Yeah, they had the win last week against the Cardinals, but that feels like the aberration now. And also, I mean, the Jets are still sitting pretty, and if for some reason they wouldn't make it to the playoffs, Robert Sala doesn't have to worry about his job. I think Brandon Staley, if the Chargers don't make it, could be in real trouble. Is that, is that a scoop? <laughs> uh, <laughs> or just a feeling? I just think it's, okay. it's something to keep an eye on. Uh, I, I think the Chargers' loss is more concerning to the Jets. You, you still can make the playoffs. You can go uh, and and re kind of salvage this season. But the Chargers, you're not going to catch Kansas City, and now you're fighting with other teams and you're losing tiebreakers and losing division games. This was difficult. No question. The Jets lost to a better team. Minnesota's won 10 games. The Raiders have not been that good. They played better recently. But the Chargers, if they want to be a playoff team, need to win that game. Mm -hmm. Deshaun Watson was blank in his return to the NFL. Uh, I blank, I guess. I mean, it's still, it's too early to know anything. 700 days, he was rusty, we expected it. I think it's going to take some time. We'll see what he does next week against Cincinnati and how long it takes him to knock off the rust. That's what I would say was as expected. Mm -hmm. If you knew anything about football, you're going back, playing a big emotional game. You haven't played in almost two years. You haven't practiced in except a, a week in a long, long time, you're going to be up and down. Yeah, there's levels of confidence in football, right? You're confident about yourself, mm -hmm. but am, do I trust the guys around me? Do I trust the receivers? Do I trust my instincts? When you haven't played in a long time, all that stuff kind of comes into question. The more you play, the more that stuff kind of goes away for a guy like Deshaun Watson. He'll get better and better as he goes. All right, this is the last one. The Commanders-Giants tie was what? <laughs> I feel like it was fitting. I don't know. <laughs> that it was, was the word I was going to use. It's like this thing's just not going to end well for anybody. Yeah, both of these teams have been winning games like this where you say, how did they win that game? And so they're playing each other. Mm -hmm. And how are the Giants going to win? And then, oh, how's Washington going to win? Heineke's going to do something. And it was kind of fitting that they ended up in a tie. Heineke magic, baby. Yeah. Um, I think for the Giants, it's, it's particularly disappointing because I think they felt like they had it late in the game. They had an opportunity to go up by two scores at the end, and they made some blunders that ended up coming back to hurt them. But they're both still in the hunt. And if you asked us that 12 weeks ago, I think everybody would say, I'll take that, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, there's a lot of football to be played, and they're still fighting. Mm -hmm. That's fitting and fair. All right, <laughs> that wraps up our Week 13 wrap-up. We hope to see you for Week 14. We've got the Miami Dolphins taking on the Chargers. We'll see you on Football Night in America at 7 Eastern on Sunday night. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.